if uh, the Russian army marched into Ukraine today, would you recommend that the U.S. go to war? I never recommended the United States to uh, use force, you know, um, to, send, to uh, use boots on the ground in Ukraine. Um, what I said, and I'm saying now, is that uh, Ukraine was a very important test for the resolve of the free world to defend the existing world order. Um, unlike Estonia, Latvia, or Poland, Ukraine is not a member of NATO. So that's why you know, the United States has no direct obligations to um, send troops to defend this country. But if we're talking about moral foreign policy, if we're talking about credibility, so we should not forget that in 1994, the United States, uh, along, uh, uh, together with the Great Britain, uh, forced Ukraine to give up its nuclear weapon um, uh, back to Russia uh, in exchange for the uh, guarantees, the territorial borders of Ukraine to be guaranteed. And there was a Budapest memorandum signed by Bill Clinton, uh, John Major, and Boris Yeltsin. And of course, Ukrainian, Ukrainian president as well. So what those who say it was memorandum with no obligations, yes, you're right. But it's about the credibility of the office. And I believe from the very beginning, the United States could offer more help to Ukraine. And I think it's, it's, it's a shame that uh, uh, this administration, actually it's not an administration, it's one person, the President of the United States, who acted against the, against the advice of the Congress, bipartisan support, against the advice of State Department, and against the advice of his own Vice President. And I'm not even mentioning Pentagon. So to provide Ukraine with lethal weapons. And I saw the list of these weapons uh, required by Ukrainians. It's a very small list. You know, one US base you know, could actually provide it without even noticing. You know. it, was, it would be more of a psychological uh, um, uh, a move to send message to Putin and to Russian generals. Because at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's the, the Cold War uh, mentality, which unfortunately we, we, we we're living through now. It's, it was about you know, your psychological uh, uh, readiness to stand your ground and uh, to um, uh, demonstrate a resolve. And uh, uh, showing weakness in Crimea and in eastern Ukraine. So I believe that uh, West is, 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 provoking, is provoking Putin for further actions. If Putin moves you know, into uh, Ukraine, um, of course, more help will be needed. But uh, Ukraine army is pretty strong strong enough to inflict the damage beyond repair for Putin. And he knows. The reason he stopped in, in, in Ukraine, not because he, he turned to be a dove, you know, out of hawk. He just calculated the, 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 the damages. And he knew that, you know, it would be devastating for him to see thousands of body bags coming from Ukraine to Russia. He expected that ethnic Russians in Ukraine would, uh, would be embracing uh, Russian tanks and Russian soldiers. Contrary to his expectations, uh, overall majority of ethnic Russians in Ukraine signed for Ukrainian army, not, not for, for in, in invading force. What actually uh, we saw in eastern Ukraine is more like Russian civil war. Most of people fighting on, on the Ukrainian side were ethnic Russians because they knew what was Putin, Putin Russia was and they didn't want to live in, the, in, in this country. So it was a conscious choice of, of uh, uh, Ukrainians and Russians living in Ukraine to stick with Europe and not to go back to the Putin's, you know, golden.